Hi, I'm Ray Tanzen, Product Manager here at Personas. In this video, I'm going to go through the new feature of soft patching or digital patching on our new Series 3 Studio Live mixers. Now, this digital patching is a way to be able to route all of your inputs and outputs to the DSP channels on the mixer uh, in any way that you want. So think of it as a patch bay. Uh, you have a, your mixer. It has its 32 channels, its auxiliary channels, um, and it has all of your inputs on the back. Uh, it also has inputs available on AVB and USB and SD card. With the digital patching, uh, you can now route any of those inputs that are coming in, whether it be an analog input, AVB input, USB input or SD card input, and you can choose to route that to any of the 32 channels, even multiples of the channels if you want. Um, so this is really cool. Now that we have our uh, stage boxes available, it allows you to flexibly patch those into different channels that you want. Even with your analog inputs, uh, it allows you to do things, for example, like um, bring your input one uh, into channels one and two. Uh, so with your kick, for example, you can now do parallel processing. Um, another great use for it is, say you've got a lead vocal, you can bring that in on one of your channels, say channel 14, and then soft patch that same input into channel 15, set up one of them as your front of house channel, and the other one with completely separate fat channel processing for your monitor mix, allowing you to custom tailor uh, monitor mix uh, processing uh, on that channel. Uh, so those are just a couple of examples of things that you can do. Uh, you can also do soft patching on your outputs as well. So you can do things like take your uh, solo bus, your solo mix, and route that out of one of your mix outputs on the back. Uh, you can take um, on some of the smaller frame mixers where you don't have as many physical outputs, you can choose which mix you want to send out of a local output or which one you want to send out to a network output or a USB output, for example. So a lot of different possibilities. Um, it can get a little hairy with soft patching, so you want to make sure you really sit down and think about how you want to set up your mixer with regards to this patching um, to make sure you don't accidentally get yourself into trouble. Um, but what I'm going to cover in this video is just the uh, basics of how to do the soft patching, where the uh, settings are located, uh, and some of the, the basic fundamentals of uh, changing things and restoring things. So let's start on the console. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can access the uh, soft patching or the digital patching. Um, you'll notice that our overview screen now for our channel has changed a little bit. Uh, we've changed the layout, but one important thing up, up here on the top left, we now have an indicator that shows uh, which channel you are on and where that channel is sourced from. So if you touch that source button up there, it's going to open up your digital patching screen. So on this screen, uh, you've got your input sources that you can set up and some your soft patching as well as your outputs and resets. We're going to dig into all those here in just a second. But before we do that, uh, another way to access that digital patching screen is from the home button. Then you go into your audio routing and you'll see this digital patching button here. So once you're on the digital patching screen, you're going to see a uh, list of options on the left. These are tabs that allow you to choose uh, which section of the digital patching you're currently working with. So the first one is going to be your input source. Down from that is your analog outputs. This is going to be the physical outputs on the back of the mixer. Uh, and then you have your AVB outputs. This is the 56 channels of AVB that are being sent out onto the network. It's choosing what you want to send out of those 56 AVB channels. Your USB outputs, same thing, but for your 40 USB channels. And your SD card and AES. Now, the only thing that is soft patchable for the SD card and AES, AES, of course, is only two channels, so you're just choosing which mix you want to send out of the AES. And for the SD card, this is for your last uh, two channels on the SD card, the channels 33 and 34. Again, to choose which mix you want to record. For the SD card recording, the first one through 32 are always going to be sourced from the 32 input channels on the mixer. Um, below this, you have a reset all and a master reset. The reset all button is going to reset all of the uh, digital patching to the default settings for only whatever one of those tabs you're currently on. 
So it allows you to quickly just revert just say your AVB outputs back to their default settings. The master reset is going to reset all of the digital patching on the entire mixer back to its default settings. Uh, so if you just need to get back to a, to a uh, start point or if you've gotten things a little messed up and you just need to start over again, it's a great way to do that. Um, You'll notice when you do it, you will get a confirmation screen, so you can't do it on accident. Um, so you do have an opportunity to cancel out of that. So let's take a look at each of these screens and walk through uh, how to use them. So we'll start with the input source screen. So on this screen, you're going to have uh, two main columns here. Uh, the first one is your input, and it's going to tell you which channel on the mixer, and it's going to tell you what the so assigned source is for that channel. So it has an icon for your analog, uh, your network, USB, and SD card. And then this little uh, X with the arrow at the end is a reset. Uh, what that will do is it will reset whichever input you're on for that channel back to its default routing just for that channel. Um, so these buttons here are really going to just mimic the uh, input source selection buttons that are the physical buttons on the console or the drop down you have in the channel settings in UC Surface. So if I just touch this button, it's going to change channel 1. So instead of being sourced from its analog input, it's now sourced from its network input. Now on the network input, uh, you'll see when I'm on that input, my available sources are going to show all of my AVB input. So if I select that column, I can now scroll through all of my available 56 AVB inputs and choose which one of those I want to bring into channel 1. So by default it's channel 1, but maybe I want it to be channel 5. And now the channel 1 on my mixer, when it's set to network input, is going to be receiving the AVB channel 5 input on that channel. If I go back to my analog input, it's still going to be on channel 1, but I can change that. Again, like we said, for example, if I wanted to do uh, some parallel processing on my kick drum and my kick drum is on channel 1, uh, I can go over here to channel 2 and I'll change that to analog 1. Um, if maybe I've got it somewhere else, I don't know what to do, I just need to get it back, I can just hit this button here to revert it back, and now it's back on analog 2, which is its default. And you can do that for all of the available 32 channels, as well as your auxiliary inputs, your tape input, your talkback, your effects returns. Uh, effects returns are great. We actually have on the Series 3 mixers, you can send your effects send bus out pre-effects, uh, so you can then return that uh, into the stereo returns. So if you wanted to use some outboard processing, uh, for your effects, you can do that. Um, and then you also have all of your mixes. So um, your mixes are set up so that, for example, if I have uh, a mixer set up, two mixers set up, and I have a mix from one of the mixers, and it's just more convenient to have that mix come out of the mixer on the other side of the room so I don't have to run an analog snake, so just to get a speaker locally right there, um, I can actually route uh, something a mix directly to uh, one of those mixes and it will bypass the local mix on the mixer and send out that network source into that mix. Um, that's the patching that we actually use and set up for you under the hood when you use a mixer as a stage box. It's just you don't have to do it manually, we take care of it. Um, so now we've exposed that ability for you to do uh, as you see fit for your particular use case. So that's the input sourcing. Let's take a look at our outputs. So if I jump over to my analog outputs, I'm going to see a list of all my mix outputs. Now this is going to list only the physical analog mix outputs you have on your mixer. So as I scroll down, I am, since I'm on the 32 channel, I will see all 16 of my mix outputs plus my four uh, subgroup outputs. And then I can choose to source those, again, from any of my mix outputs as well as my effects sends, my subgroups, my main left right, and my solo bus. The solo bus is a great tool if you happen to be using your mixer as a monitor mixer. You can set the solo bus to come out of one of your mix outputs, send that out to a Q wedge next to you, and now as you're soloing up your aux sends, you're going to hear it out of your Q wedge at monitor land. Uh, so you're hearing exactly what the artist is hearing uh, through their wedge uh, up on stage. 
um, than our AVB outputs. Really works the same way. Uh, the big difference here though is because it's not the analog mix output, the AVB output can be selected as a, from an available source of any source on the mixer. So all of your uh, input channels, your auxiliary channels, your mixes, your effects sends, your subgroups, your main mix, and your solo, uh, any of that stuff can be sent out of any of your AVB outputs. It's the same for your USB outputs. You have 40 of those. Select them to come from anywhere you want. And then uh, we explained the SD card and AES uh, earlier. So that's how you access and use these uh, from the console mixer. And now let's turn and show you how to access them in UC Surface. So in UC Surface, what you're going to want to do is while you're connected up with the mixer, you go into your mix settings and you'll notice an additional uh, digital patching tab over in the far right. So if you open up this tab, the first screen you're going to see is that input source screen. Now this is laid out a little bit differently than it is on the console just because we have some more screen real estate to do so. So what I have here, this is a great tool to be able to do some quick patching and routing. So right now everything's set to analog. If I choose AVB, I'm gonna, I can go through and change each channel that I want to source from my network instead. So just a quick way to be able to go through multiple channels at once and assign them. Same for USB and SD card. And so this view is going to give you an overview uh, of where all of your channels are sourced from in just one quick glance. It's a really handy tool, great for troubleshooting as well as for quick and easy setup. So after the input source, if I go over, I now have my input patching. And the main difference you're going to see here in UC Surface compared with the mixer is your patching is laid out on a grid. Um, and that's mainly because in UC Surface we have the screen real estate to do so. Uh, with the screen on the mixer, um, it's not quite as easy to fit a grid on there and make it easy to navigate. So, but on here you've got the grid. So you have all of your sources on the top and the destinations to the left. So this is my analog mic line input one, and it's currently routed to the mixer's channel one. And I can change that, move it around anywhere I want. If I go into AVB, you're gonna see the same. Uh, you see, because I had changed this on a console, that channel one is being sourced from AVB five right now. I can change that back. Um, USB, and then the SD card. So again, uh, you have this flexibility to be able to do this on a grid and you see surface. It's the exact same functionality as on the console, just a different way that it's laid out. Um, over here on the right, we also have the master reset and the reset source or reset all. Uh, again, it works the same way as on the console. Um, so if I'm on my analog outputs here and I've got something set up, I can say reset those outputs. It's going to give me a warning, make sure that's what I want to do. Uh, yes, I do. And there we go. We are set back up to our default routing just for our analog outputs. Um, and then AVB outputs, again, you can scroll through and see all of the available sources. So again, sources on the top and then the destinations on the left. Destinations are going to be your AVB channels 1 through 56. And the screens will look the same for your USB outputs. Um, again, with the SD card and AES, there's only stereo uh, routing available from mixes, so that's what you're presented here. That is just a basic overview of the new soft patching feature that we have in the Studio Live Series 3 mixers. Again, you can access that directly from the console itself or from our UC Surface software if you have it connected to your console or if you're using a rack mixer. So this is a very, very powerful tool. It comes in really handy, especially once you get into the networking with multiple ear mixes and stage boxes. Uh, but even without that, there's some pretty handy features uh, of just having digital patching that will allow you some uh, more flexibility uh, with what you can do with your mixer. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the rest of our videos on our website, personas.com, or on our YouTube channel.